We will have Santa Clara County Supervisor District 3 candidates, uh, Kansen Chu and Otto Lee. And Otto Lee will go first for eight minutes. He will provide information. Kansen Chu will then go for 10 minutes. And then Otto Lee will go for two minutes for a total of 10 minutes. And so we will begin the meeting now. Um, so Otto Lee, are you ready? Hi, good evening. Um, so I'm on top of the agenda. We start right this moment? Yes, yes, if we could please. Okay, great. Thank you very much for uh, hosting this. Uh, let me see if I get my timer on just to make sure we keep on time. Good All evening. Right. Good <laughs> Yes, good evening. Buenas tardes, todos. Uh, first, my name is Otto Lee, and I want to thank you for being here, for inviting me to join you tonight. Uh, before I start my presentation tonight, I would like to ask for a short moment of silence uh, for a very uh, sad event this weekend. Uh, George Floyd, an armed, handcuffed black man who died after being pinned down by the knee of a fired Minneapolis police officer on the throat and choked to death right after he said, I can't breathe. Remember Eric Garner? I would like to ask for a brief moment of silence. Thank you, Gracias. We need to stop this double standard of white men storming into Michigan State Capitol with AK-47s and got treated nicely. Communities of color is being killed and we need to stop. That being said, let me allow me to introduce myself. My name is Otto Lee. I'm the former mayor of the city of Sunnyvale. I'm also a veteran. I served in the U.S. Navy Reserve for 28 years, uh, retired as a Navy commander, and served a year in Baghdad in Iraq and was awarded the Bronze Star for helping close over 200 bases and bringing home 150,000 of troops. Uh, in my day job, I'm an attorney working with various uh, technology and musicians, uh, including Juan Gabriel, who was one of my old clients, I helped him to protect his mark, El Noa Noa. Um, and I'm also a business owner. Most importantly, I believe I'm a father. I have three young girls, uh, 15, 12, and nine years old, uh, attending high school, middle school, and also uh, elementary school right here in uh, the valley uh, of all public schools. I'm currently running for the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors in District 3. My decision to run for this office is very personal. Uh, I immigrated here with my parents of over 25 years ago and I'm raising my kids here. I want to make sure that we have a Star County that's safe for everyone. That lets everyone thrive, regardless of your status, your race, your religion, your income level, or your housing. My campaign is focused on public health, affordable housing, homelessness, and unhoused, and also transportation. Issues of concern of so many of us. Concerns that I've heard over and over again while talking to the community and knocking almost 20,000 doors. And I would like to ask if you may allow me to say a few words in Spanish. Um, buenas tardes, uh, soy Otto Lee. Se vi a mi país por más que uh, 30 años uh, en la U.S. Navy. Soy veterano de Fuerzas Armas, inmigrante de Hong Kong, de abogado, abogado de patente, ex alcalde de nivel, y he dedicado mi vida a servir a la comunidad. COVID-19. Nos ha afectado a todos, pero especialmente a las comunidades asiáticas y latinas. Tenemos que ayudar a nuestros pequeños negocios y comunidades más pobres y para que los enfermeros y los doctores tengan el equipo de protección. Necesitamos un supervisor que tenga la empatía y pasión para sacarnos de esta crisis. Estoy prometido a luchar por usted para que podamos superar este desafío juntos. I would promise to fight for you on the board of supervisors to make sure that we have all the resources needed, whether it's for our doctors, our nurses, and for our community. For example, most recently at the Major Medical Center, they just announced closing the maternity ward to save money. Uh, is this really the time to save money, people? Uh, I was out there, and I believe uh, Assemblyman Kinson Chu as well is also supportive of this uh, important uh, uh, thing that is making sure that places like RMC 
provide these important services to our community. And the fact that people would then have to drive potentially 40 minutes in traffic to get to maternity or for delivery is extremely dangerous for our community. And I think these are the issues that we need to fight very hard on. Directing resources is one of the most important things we can do as your elected official. I'm also a very strong proponent of programs for our kids. Uh, K through 12 is certainly paid for by the state, uh, given through the school board. However, many other important services, whether it's mental health, counseling, or after school program, is oftentimes being forgotten, or they don't have resources to pay for it. I always believe 3 to 6 p.m. is the most dangerous time for our children. Why? Well, 3 p.m. is when the kids get out of school, but we're not home till probably after 6. So what are the kids doing between 3 to 6 p.m.? As you know, when kids don't have anything better to do uh, and find <coughs> more friends, uh, bad things can happen. <coughs> Personally, I was very active uh, after school. I was fortunate to be able to either join a sports team or go to the library to do study and tutoring. These are very important programs. I think the county has is, is got the responsibility to make sure funding is made available to provide whether it's art program, sports program, or other important tutoring program to help our kids so that they won't fall behind. Other program I think is really important as well as the bilingual immersion program that is so needed in our community. Speaking another language other than English to me is never a handicap. To me, that is a real important skill set. For example, I'm trying to get my daughters to make sure that they learn Chinese, to make sure they don't forget their heritage, but also the language that will be very important for them when they grow up and grow older. My oldest daughter, Aubrey, is also taking Spanish class now. And I think the ability to speak different languages, whether it's Spanish, whether it's Chinese and other languages, will be extremely important for their growth and for their future uh, job opportunities. Uh, unfortunately, we have a, a president that is not leading. Uh, the COVID situation is being mishandled in so many ways in the federal level and is really up to our county, putting up all the resources that is needed to make sure that we are able to get the testing required. As we all know, many small businesses are struggling. Many families uh, are, are hurting and we are out there helping out distributing food. Uh, we are seeing that the food line of people looking for, for, for food is getting longer and longer. The situation is not getting any better. $1,200 a person is not gonna last for months. In this case, not even for weeks. Um, especially as we know COVID is affecting the minority community extremely uh, uh, disproportionately. And these are the issues that our county need to work hard to make sure. Finally, I want to talk about other issues regarding ICE. ICE has no place in our community, and I will fight very hard on the county to make sure that they are not in our schools, they are not in our hospitals, and, and they are nowhere uh, affecting, scaring, and harassing our community living here peacefully. The people cannot trust our police officers if I, or, or those who are in uniform. How can we have a safe community? So these are the issues that I'm very, very concerned about. And I want to make sure that our community will be safe for everybody. And again, I think I'm almost running out of time for my eight minutes, but I want to thank everybody for having me here today. And uh, muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Otto Lee. And so, Ken Chu, you may not speak for 10 minutes. All right. Very, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the DeFi United for hosting this event. You know, when I serve on the San Jose City Council, I'm part of the uh, uh, East Alliance with uh, then Council Member Norm Campos, and we fought to get the uh, uh, fire station too, actually renovated, so there was some success story. At that time, we have the uh, re redevelopment agency to be able to get a uh, Rock Business Association going. I've been living in uh, th this area, you know, north of um, Mayberry, uh, south of Berryessa for 30, 35 some years, um, uh, and a couple years in Evergreen. So I kind of, I kind of raised my family here in, in the east side. And uh, my daughter, uh, now with her two children, are actually live in uh, District 5. So this is really 
uh, being a, a home for, for me. I live here you know, uh, at a big, biggest part of my life. I want to introduce a little bit about myself. I came to the United States as a graduate student at an adult age, not speaking English, uh, not speak much of English. And I was on my own and I uh, got my master's degree in engineering. Then uh, IBM hired, hired me in to, to move to San Jose in 1978. So being a resident in San Jose since 1978. I pretty much started and, uh, with nothing. I'm very uh, fortunate and, and that the community, uh, this, uh, this uh, country has given me to, to uh, first run for the uh, uh, school board and then uh, run into uh, uh, get, and got elected to San Jose City Council and served there for eight years. Uh, before I got uh, elected to the uh, uh, assembly. And uh, in the assembly at that time, you know, we went through some real economic downturn in 2008, uh, the re recession. So a very, very uh, uh, honored to have the opportunity to work with my colleagues at different level of government to pull San Jose uh, out of that uh, uh, really, really a, a bad situation. Remember that time, you know, the foreclosure, the homes and so on and so forth. And uh, I, I wanted to uh, also uh, thank the uh, uh, county supervisor, uh, Cindy Chavez, under her leadership. Uh, we got this uh, COVID-19 pretty much under control. We set a good example, not in, in California, but throughout the nation. You know, I also want all of you to follow the, the shelter in place order. And it was really your effort that helped us uh, flatten the line. A um, little bit about myself, back to and, and my, my, my background. I worked at IBM for 18 years as a, an engineer. And, and then my wife and I decided to start a business, what I called uh, an immigrant moment. <clears throat> so we started a Chinese restaurant, and uh, at that, during that time in the 90s, I started getting involved with the community. I was uh, first appointed to the Santa Clara County Mental Health Board and served there for uh, six to seven years. And then I also served on the private industry council, PIC, which is a JTPA money coming to the, 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 the region. Now they change to work to future and we're focusing on helping all dislocated workers and uh, at risk in the use. And, and so that's really kind of started me uh, into the community services. I also uh, served on the YMCA Metro Board. I was a member of the uh, uh, East Side Evergreen for many years. They, uh, and during my tenure at the YMCA, we got to introduce the uh, corner, Project Cornerstone to, uh, to Santa Clara. And also I started a Minority Advisory Council, MAC, and, and uh, really trying to address some of the disparities that we have in, in our community. And at the South East City Council, I'm very, very uh, proud to have made some, a, a lot of uh, accomplishment. In 2008, I was uh, introduced a single-use plastic bag ban, and that uh, finally got uh, adopted, San Jose being the first city to uh, adopt this uh, uh, single plastic bag ban. And we, just was, we went through the trouble of getting the EIR and, and uh, a lot of study. And we actually uh, let other cities in the, in, in the county to uh, use our EIR to help them with their uh, plastic bag ban. And, um, and when, so when I first got elected to the uh, assembly, the biggest issue uh, on, my, on, top, on my head was uh, uh, the job, because so we, we just uh, came out of a recession and also water because of the drought and transportation. 
and I was very, very happy that uh, I got appointed to the uh, Water Committee, Transportation Committee, and Job and Economic Development Committee, and also have the honor to chair the uh, State Assembly uh, Committee on Human uh, Services. Because the human services always be the center of my public services. Like as, as, as state uh, started uh, with the uh, uh, mental health board. So um, o over the last six years, I have done a lot of uh, 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 work in the uh, mental health area. Uh, I was just recognized by the state, uh, uh, countrywide, Mental Health America, and being the uh, uh, legislator of the year, and also received honor from the uh, San Andreo Regional Center for helping out with uh, people uh, with disability. And uh, I was also a chair of the, um, the Revenue and Tax uh, a Committee. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I was on the Revenue and Tax Committee Insurance Committee, Chair of the Cultural Related Committee. So I, I'm, I'm sharing with you the, uh, the, a lot of uh, what I have done. I thought that would be pretty, pretty good, give you an idea of uh, uh, where my value stands and uh, what I will be, uh, uh, continue my public service uh, 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 area. The, um, right now with the COVID-19, uh, was the, the, the shelter in place. I think the biggest issue uh, is how can we get this uh, economy back? And I, I had the experience, you know, uh, working through uh, with my colleague through the, the, the last recession and we're working really, really hard to uh, make at the state level to help the local government to, uh, to really, well, actually not just the government, but the, the local uh, business and uh, regular people to uh, back on the job. The, uh, uh, the tra traffic is still a big issue, and I, I was uh, able to uh, co-author a couple of the bills and, and brought the money to the area. The one that I'm very proud of is the uh, money year mark for bringing the, uh, the light rail uh, 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 to Eastridge. I felt uh, they, uh, with the bar coming down to Milpitas, there's a seamless con connection between bar and light rail. And if we can bring the light rail from Allen Rock to Eastridge and then connect it to the, uh, uh, the rapid bus services, we'll be able to reduce a lot of uh, uh, traffic. Of course, I want that, uh, that, that connection and uh, done above ground, so we will not have impact to the uh, uh, the, the traffic on, on, on Capitol Avenue. So I will also be able to uh, uh, focus on some of the public safety. I was talking to uh, uh, Captain Hobb, and last year I will be able to get some money earmarked for this area to address the car braking issue. And uh, the five city that I represent. And they kind of jo joined a consortium and, and make some great pro uh, progresses. We just had a, a press conference uh, uh, shortly before the uh, shelter in place. And so uh, this is, you, you know, you, you see what you get. You know, I am very committed to community service. I'm, you know, very committed to the east side. Yeah, uh, and because uh, I, I started uh, uh, from very humble beginning and, and really over the years uh, uh, considered myself uh, a, a, a working family man and uh, I, I would really love to you pretty much put all my experiences on the school board, the city council, as well as the state assembly back home so I can be really make a bigger impact to the life of uh, my family, my children, and my grandchildren. And um, I'm really uh, uh, very thankful for, for your uh, community involvement. We here in Berryessa, we have the, the uh, BCAC, and I was honored to be 
their their um, uh, what you call it, uh, citizen of the year. So it's it's, it's great uh, uh, to to have the in interaction with the, the neighborhood community group. And I thank you very much. All right, thank you, Kenson. Uh, so Otto, uh, uh, I think you have close to three minutes because we did go a little bit over. And so feel free to take up to about three minutes. Oh, sure. Thank you very much, Juan, uh, for that. And uh, first of all, thank you, Juan, for arranging this and inviting me to the D5 United uh, Forum. Again, it's an honor truly to be speaking to such a strong and vibrant community and all the leaders. Uh, a couple of issues I also want to bring up uh, that I didn't get to talk about earlier, and I believe I'm going to talk about it with uh, Ray Mueller. The first one is, of course, the census, right? This is something that's conducted every 10 years, and it provides detailed data on the U.S. population. Uh, that is so important because it helps distribute the political power under nearly a trillion dollars in federal spending. Uh, for the community to be fairly represented and to receive this money, you've got to be counted. And so uh, even though it started April 1st, I think a lot of people still have not gone through the process. And I know Ray will talk more later on with his team to hopefully uh, give you the information and really important to get out folks to know how important it is to be counted. Without, the, without being counted, we're not going to get the money. Um, second thing is, of course, the voting by mail process. Uh, this is something that everybody received the ballot by mail now. Uh, and being in such an important election this November, if we know who on, on the ballot, uh, this is really a way to make our, get our chance of our, uh, get a chance to get our voices heard. Um, and uh, most recently, I was just talking to uh, Councilman uh, Sergio Jimenez, a friend who has also endorsed the campaign about growing up in this very community and how we can work together to move past the politics to make real change to happen. With so many unincorporated pockets also in this area, it means that you don't have a representative in council, and so the Board of Supervisor becomes the main governing body for these areas. Uh, I'm very honored to say that I'm the candidate that's been supported by the East Side Teachers uh, Association. Uh, and most recently, last week, we just got received the uh, good news, the registered nurses, a professional association representing 3,000 registered nurses risking the life, you know, uh, serving us uh, during this important fight on the front line for COVID-19 is also supporting me uh, in this election. Uh, I'm also the only candidate here uh, being endorsed by the Democratic Party. And uh, uh, one uh, news I want to share is that I was also just got reelected to be a member of the DNC representing you on the national level to help vote for the presidential uh, nominee um, and hoping to uh, evict Trump from the White House once and for all. Um, again, it's really an honor to represent you in so many ways in so many uh, um, uh, area, whether we are talking about the local government or the national level or the po uh, political structure. As we all know, uh, Dave Cortese, the current supervisor, has done a good job uh, representing our district. And one of the most important things he's done after Donald Trump got elected is to file a lawsuit against the federal government to stop the bad the, uh, policies that's coming in federal government. And this is one thing I uh, promise all of you that if elected as your county supervisor, I will definitely be fighting hard uh, against Trump and really hope to make sure he doesn't get reelected. But regardless of that outcome, we want to make sure that Santa Clara County will not be following those type of um, racist and uh, bigoted policies that he's been uh, eschewing. Um, again, making your vote on the board of supervisors is incredibly important. This is not just uh, one of those races. This is going to matter for everybody. Uh, anybody who doesn't understand how important the county is, after COVID-19, I think everybody understands who Dr. Sarah Cody is. And when she says shelter in place, everything gets shut down, right? So I think it's so important to make sure that uh, the, the board of supervisors represented by people uh, strong on our, our issues, uh, on our values. And thank you so much for your time. Muchísimas gracias por todo el tiempo. Gracias. Thank you.